Generator speeds are one of the most controversial issues in Dead by Daylight. However, today I'm not here to talk about the base speeds of generators. I'm here to talk about the consistency of generator speeds, or to be precise, the lack of consistency. So generators by default take 90 seconds for just one person to do. And there are some perks on the survivor side that will speed up generators and some perks on the killer side that will slow down generators. I think most people would agree that each side having something that could focus on the speed of generators is good. And it allows you a bit more control of your build and how the game goes. However, the things that exist in this game right now that affect generator speeds are pretty ridiculous. Not too long ago, I made a video talking about toolboxes, so I'm not going to be talking about those too much in this video, but I will be bringing them up later. But let me give you an example of what I mean. If, as survivor, you decide to run hyper focus, a toolbox, stakeout, resilience, and maybe this is not happening to finish it off. If you get lucky, you can do a generator in about 45 seconds, which is half the time that generators normally are. Now, I don't care who you play, survivor, killer, freaking spectator, entity, I don't care what you play, that is ridiculous. The generator speed should not be able to be halved just because you ran a build for it. That is the main objective of the game, and that's quite ridiculous. However, this goes for killer too. Killers can run four slowdowns, and if they have a perk like Pentimento, that on its own will make generators take what like 20 extra seconds to do on top of that they might have deadlock or deadman switch things that let you stop working on the generator entirely they might have pop goes the weasel which can be used an unlimited amount of times or pain res which is only limited but it can prog from the other side of the map so all of this combined let's say you're trying to do your generator and you get like pain res deadlock deadman switch you get hit with all these perks and then the killer pops it at the last second that generator might have been in the works for three minutes sometimes three and a half minutes that's also pretty ridiculous i think most people would agree that generators do not need to go from 90 seconds to 40 to maybe 180 that's just too much what makes this an even bigger problem is that some survivors and killers don't need these to be in the game i don't care how broken you think survivor is nurse does not need four slowdowns she just doesn't you can consistently do good with nurse with like one or two slowdowns and you could probably win most of your games if you have like 10 hours of experience on her and for a swift that's on full comms the whole time and they're all good at chase and they all have really good builds with second chance perks one or two of those people shouldn't have a full build dedicated to generators and just be able to crank them out like crazy so i think it's just a massive problem that generators are so inconsistent and it can be quite confusing for newer players or even experienced players a lot of killers that have thousands of hours in the game including me unfortunately we have like an internal clock that kind of gets better the more you play the game so at the start of the game depending on how long your first chase is you might be like, ah, generator's about to pop. Oh, two generators are about to pop. You might have seen a lot of content creators do this, be like, yeah, generator's about to pop in like five seconds and then they get it right and everyone's like, whoa. But when you play the game for that long, your internal clock starts to be pretty good. You just keep these things in the back of your mind. But all of this goes out the window considering that both sides can bring some extremely ridiculous stuff to affect generator speeds. And I think this highlights an even bigger issue with Dead by Daylight as a whole. And that is just consistency. If you have a nurse with four slowdowns on a map like the game versus four survivors that are solo queue and then you have another match where it's Trapper on Eerie of Crows versus a four-man Swift all of whom have a lot of experience and the Trapper isn't even running slowdown at all that's not gonna look like the same game at that point that's like two different Dead by Daylights we're not even talking about the same game anymore so the best killer and the worst killer they have a massive difference between them that goes for the best maps and the worst maps some maps are extremely survivor sided some maps are extremely killer sided and that also goes for the best perks and the worst perks now me bringing up this issue of consistency it's good to complain about but also how exactly is behavior going to fix something like this this isn't something that you just change overnight fix all the maps fix all the perks fix all the killers that's probably never gonna happen let alone happen quickly however the reason i bring up generators is because these are the easiest things to adjust with really strong and weak killers and also really uneven maps. those things can take quite some time to rework or do however with things like generator perks and toolboxes you can adjust some numbers and make it a lot more even. This would obviously require quite a bit of testing, but I think behavior really needs to adjust the impact that both sides have on generator speeds, because if they do, it allows for more consistency and less stress, I think, on both sides, and also less frustration too. But let me know if you agree or disagree in the comments. I always look forward to reading some of the comments that give me some new ideas and a new point of view. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching.